Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss the flat top sampling procedure. Before I begin the flat top sampling procedure, let me give some context as to why we should study this. When we started discussion on the practical aspects of sampling, we found that there are certain changes that must be made to the sampling theorem to make it a bit more practical. In my previous session, I also discussed the natural sampling theorem. However, we found that natural sampling does not create any interesting effects and that is one of the reasons why we continue to explore the sampling and this leads us to the flat top sampling procedure. Flat top sampling unlike natural sampling is basically based upon the ideal sampling theorem that is we are going to first perform instantaneous sampling of the input data and then we are going to extend the width of each instantaneous pulse to create or make it look like a rectangular pulse. That is what is the original idea behind flat top sampling. Let us start by considering a situation where the analog signal which is our input signal g of t is sampled instantaneously at a rate fs which is given by 1 by ts and let the duration of each sample after performing instantaneous sampling be lengthened to capital T. So this is illustrated in figure 1 here. So what we have done is we have first and foremost performed instantaneous sampling and the amplitude of each sample is then extended for a duration of capital T and this is repeated by a duration of 1 TS. So we have a train of samples so generated which are of width capital T and the interval between each sample is 1 TS. Let us now denote a signal that is so generated in this particular sequence by S of T and this will be our flat top pulses signal. So let us denote that as S of T equals summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity G of n T S which is our amplitude of each sample multiplied by H of T minus N T S. So this is in fact the function that represents the rectangular pulse which in fact is given by H of T equals 1 over the duration capital T and otherwise it is 0. This can also be written as H of T equals RECT of T by capital T minus 1 by 2. So this is the rectangular pulse function and we should note from the rectangular pulse function we have given here which has an amplitude of 1. Now we have already discussed previously the ideal sampling theorem. From that theorem we have identified an equation for the sample signal which is usually represented by g delta of t. That is g delta of t equals summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of n t s into delta of t minus n t s. In fact, if you just go back and look, this is equation 1 of the ideal sampling theorem. In the next step, I am going to convolve g delta of t with the rectangular pulse which is h of t. This is going to give g delta of t convolution with h of t equals integral minus infinity to plus infinity g delta of tau into h of t minus tau d tau. Now, in order to substitute g delta of tau, we take the RHS of equation 3 and wherever we have t, I replace it by tau. So this will be integral as it is, summation taken from the RHS of equation 3. Then we have g of n t s, there is no small t here, so it is taken as it is, plus we should also note it is a sample. Then we have delta of t minus n t s. Now since t is replaced by tau, this will be delta of tau minus n t s, then multiplied by this function, so h of t minus tau d tau. So after simplifying this equation what we will get it is summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of n t s because this is anyhow only the sample values then the integration is applied to the continuous functions which are delta of tau minus n t s and h of t minus tau d tau. So this particular function that is integral of delta and h function can be simplified by using the sifting property of the delta function which is given by equation 5 here that is integral minus infinity to plus infinity delta of tau minus n t s into h of t minus tau d tau is simplified as h of t minus n t s this is by the sifting property of the delta function. So now let us substitute equation 5 
into equation 4. So, this complete term including the integral is going to be replaced by the RHS of equation 5 which is rewritten here. That is g delta of t convolution with h of t equals summation and g of n t s retained as it is multiplied by the simplification of the integral which is h of t minus n t s. Now, very interestingly, we have come to a point where we have two equations. The first one being the equation 6 here and the second one is the equation 1 we have started our flat top sampling procedure with. If you compare the RHS of these two equations, if you look at equation 1, it is summation g of nts into h of t minus nts and if you come to equation 6, once again you have summation g of nts h of t minus nts. So, in simple words, the RHS of equation 1 and equation 6 are exactly equal. Therefore, the LHS can also be equated. That is what we have shown in equation 7 here. The LHS of equation 1 which is S of t equals LHS of equation 6 which is g delta of t convolution with h of t. Now, let us take f t on both sides of equation 7 to get S of f equals g delta of f into h of f. So, here g delta of t Fourier transform is g delta of f h of t Fourier transform is h of f, s of t Fourier transform is s of f. So, that is what is being written here. So, once again you see in equation 8 RHS we have a term which is g delta of f. Now, I am going to once again borrow an equation from the ideal sampling theorem for the transfer function of the sample signal. That is g delta of f is equals to f s into summation m varying from minus infinity to plus infinity g of f minus m f s. This is directly taken from the ideal sampling theorem. So, now let us substitute equation 9 into the RHS of equation 8 to get S of f equals this RHS is written here multiplied by H of f. Lastly, let us now assume that our input signal G of t is strictly band limited so that the values of frequencies available in G of t can only vary between minus w to plus w. Additionally, let us also consider that the input signal g of t is sampled at a rate f s that is greater than the Nyquist state. So, f s is greater than 2 w where w is the highest frequency content of the input signal g of t. So, by performing the sampling of the input signal g of t with the said restrictions that is g of t being strictly band limited and is sampled at a rate greater than 2 w, we find that the spectrum of the sampled signal consists of a periodic replica of the input signal as well as a transfer function h of f and this transfer function is directly from equation 2 which was our rectangular pulse. So, at the end if I pass this sample signal s of t through the low pass reconstruction filter then the output of this filter particularly the spectrum of the output of the filter will be equal to g of f multiplied by h of f. This is as good as passing the original analog signal g of t through a low pass signal of transfer function h of f. In fact, the equation for h of f can be obtained by applying Fourier transform to equation 2 and this in fact is given by noting that the rectangular function upon applying Fourier transform will be sinc function. So, the Fourier transform of h of t is given by h of f equals t sinc f t multiplied by exponential of minus j pi f t and this particular transfer function is shown in figure here. So, we have the amplitude response of h of f and then we have the phase response of the h of f shown in this particular diagram. Coming back to the sample signal we see that by performing flat top sampling we have introduced both amplitude distortion as well as a delay of capital T by 2. The distortion caused by the lengthening of the samples is usually called as the aperture effect. So, the next obvious thing we would like to do is to eliminate this h of f from the equation of the sample signal. This distortion may be corrected by connecting an equalizer in cascade with the low pass reconstruction filter at the receiver and very particularly the equalizer should have the effect of decreasing the in-band loss of the reconstruction filter 
as the frequency increases in such a manner as to compensate for the overall effect of the flat top sampling precision. Ideally, the amplitude response of the equalizer should be simply 1 divided by magnitude of h of f, which is shown here. That is, the amplitude response of the equalizer is 1 divided by magnitude of h of f. When I look at the equation for h of f, I will see this anyhow is only the delay term. So, only t into sinc of f t should be considered. So, h of f magnitude would be simply 1 divided by t into sinc of f t. Now, since sinc of x is equals to sin of pi x divided by pi x, we can write sinc of f t equals to sin of pi f t whole divided by pi f t. Lastly, we take the pi of t which was of the denominator here to the numerator. So, to conclude on the flat top sampling procedure, we state that the flat top sampling in fact introduces both amplitude as well as delay distortion. However, by including an equalizer in cascade with the low pass reconstruction filter, this distortion can in fact be mitigated. Right. So, that is all the discussion about the flat top sampling procedure. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.